Welcome to the Sandbox Training. In this training, we'll look at designing logic for multiplayer games. This is an advanced difficulty activity to learn about setting up logic layers for multiplayer games, which combines logic individual players' experience and synchronized logic all players' experience. How does multiplayer work? There are two logic layers we need to take a look at. Multiplayer experiences synchronize data across all players, such as object motion. However, not all logic needs to be synchronized, or MP, for all players. To improve gameplay performance, some logic can be managed on the individual or client, also SP, layer. When adding logic to an object, you can see a drop-down filter for these communication layers, all, client, or synchronized. Let's talk about object logic. Some behaviors and components only have MP type to prevent conflicts with collision, movement, etc. To be compatible in multiplayer games, an object may only have SP, only MP, or no logic. If we try to add an SP toggle component to this logic asset with an MP weather switcher behavior, you'll note we can only add the MP version of the toggle. It's important to have consistent communications. In single player experiences, SP and MP logic can communicate because all data is managed locally. In multiplayer games, SP and MP logic only interacts with its own layer. Send receive messages, detect, collide, spawn, replace, have parent and child relationship, etc. To test this, we'll try to send a trigger message to this MP weather switcher with an SP message broadcaster. In single player mode, it will work. In multiplayer mode, it will not. Now let's look at some gameplay recommendations. From the list provided, we'll work on the first two options. It's important to remember to make a multiplayer experience feel seamless for players and perform better, use as much SP logic in place of MP logic as possible. The first one we'll take a look at is the speaker component. For our left NPC, we'll add an SP speaker component. An SP speaker component is important when we only want information relevant for an individual player. Because the speaker component is SP, whenever it detects that player in the proximity, it will display this text only for that player. Now by switching the speaker component to MP, all players will see this text when it's triggered. If we take a look at the second example using askers for dialogue, we can add an SP asker. This means when a player triggers a dialogue, they're doing it at their own pace and only they will see it. And it's also compatible with quests. By changing the asker to MP, we will have the dialogue show up for all players at the same time. Use the other recommendations to build other logic examples to practice based on what you're interested in exploring. Now let's look at variables. The game rule system can communicate with SP or MP logic. In Game Maker Point 10, global variables apply to all players and local variables apply to individual players. Both work in single player games. For example, we could create a global currency for all players to share or a local currency for each player to use on their own. We already have a global variable to count ancient treasures collected from a previous activity. We can create a local player variable integer named player treasure with the initial value zero. Then we can place an ancient treasure B that's collectible that sends the message treasure B collect to rules. We can add a math rule to add a fixed value of 100 to the new variable. Now let's discuss teams. For messaging between teams, GameMaker.10 introduced a new way to send messages only to certain teams of players. Teams are defined by placing multiple spawn points that assign teams randomly when players arrive in the game. Once teams are defined, you can set the broadcast type on most logic to team and select the teams you created from a drop-down list. If we select the avatar portal and select assign team to true, we can create a team name. Then we can duplicate the object, move it, and create a second team. Once teams have been created, 
via the spawn point behavior, we can do the following with that logic. Down below, we can choose what equipment the team will wear, which can be unique to the team, set them apart from the other teams. We can add custom tags for various types of detection. We can also add some available components via the avatars feature to set the team apart, such as light, playing sounds, or visual effects. Let's practice this. If we open each spawn point we've created, we can set different equipment per team. We can choose a shield and a helmet for each team. At the bottom of the behavior, we can click add feature and we can apply a visual effect choose a different trailing effect for each team. For team B, we can choose an electric trail. For team A, we can choose a fire trail. So now when we jump in the game, depending on what team we started on, we'll add the trail, the visual effect automatically, as well as the equipment. Let's talk about resetting and instances. Instances are different play sessions of an experience. A new instance opens when a maximum number of players join one. An instance closes after a period of inactivity. Some games must be reset to replay before an instance closes. Logic triggers need to be included in your design to set things back to their original state for players, like wearables, respawning removed objects, etc. This requires careful planning before building your game logic for a single playthrough and how to do it will vary depending on the gameplay you're designing. Keep this in mind early on as you design logic to create an experience you want to publish to land or share in the gallery. Let's discuss the ways to test your multiplayer experience. GameMaker is great for rapid testing of single player games, but will not allow multiple players to enter for testing a multiplayer game. So we can either generate a test link to open it in the game client or share to the public gallery for testing and feedback. Let's first look at sharing to the gallery. Shared experiences are public and can be removed from the gallery when needed. They can be entered into game jams and used for playtesting with friends. You can also create a free experience page to tell players about a shared experience. But keep in mind, they cannot be linked from the page or monetized. To share our experience to the gallery, we'll go up to publish, drop down to share in gallery. Here we can name our experience, describe our experience, and make sure to check multiplayer experience. Once you hit share, it will load to the gallery. Make sure to remove it when you're done testing. You must own a LAN NFT to publish your experience to the sandbox map and monetize. When you're ready to publish to the map, you'll also go to publish and then publish on the map. And this will take you to the experience manager. The experience manager can help you draw in players from the map can create a free experience page linked to your experience and track player analytics. Make sure and visit the Sandbox map to find featured UGC experiences published by our community of creators. Explore their experience pages and games to see how you can publish your own. Multiplayer is a deep and complex topic because it opens many more game types and specialized approaches to create gameplay. We've introduced some of the key considerations so you can begin to explore it further. We encourage you to start building your first multiplayer experience once you feel confident with how to use GameMaker systems to build logic for a single player experience.